ESPN Women's College Basketball continues from snowy Princeton, New Jersey, where we've got a colossal matchup in the Ivy League. From Jadwin Gymnasium, both teams enter today 3-0 in Ivy League action as the Columbia Lions visit the Princeton Tigers. Welcome courtside, it's great to have you with us with Brooke Weisbrod, I'm Dave Leto. What a headliner we have in the Ivy League. Both of these schools shared the Ivy League regular season title last year, picking up right where they left off. Right, and a 3-0 start for league play already. 3-0 for both teams, and you're catching them at the upswing. Their chemistry is coming together. The discipline you're going to see from both teams today offensively is going to be awesome. This matchup features three of the top five scorers in the Ivy League, headlined by Columbia's Abby Shu, who's lethal in scores in multiple ways. All right, Abby Shu knows how to put up buckets. She got 25 on Duke, 29 on Florida, averaging 21 for the game, and just can do it all. Terrific score, and then Maddie St. Rose and Chen combined for 30 points for Princeton and a very effective offense the Tigers are bringing into this game. And you mentioned the offensive prowess of Princeton. How about the defense led by senior Ellie uh -huh. Mitchell, one of the top rebounders in the nation? Two-time Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year can also get you 15 to 20 boards. Not a huge offensive threat just for a game, but communication and being a vocal leader is also a big strength to Mitchell's game. And trying to derail her today will be Columbia's head coach Megan Griffith in her eighth year leading the Lions, a three-time captain last year, the coach of the year in the Ivy League, took this team to the WNIT Championship where they lost to Kansas. Oh, by the way, a little bit of a homecoming of sorts for six years was on the staff of Princeton. Today she's going up against Carla Berube in her fifth year leading the Tigers. She has guided Princeton to two straight NCAA tournament appearances, bro. Yeah, the, the experience in just five years, and this is a floor that not a lot of people come in and get the dub on. It's a challenging environment to play. You got a, a, a gym inside a you know, big spatial arena. There's a difference in temperature. So as a shooter, you got to get your bearings early. Yeah, speaking with her prior to the broadcast, look, she's a winner, as you know. Yes. Wherever she's gone, 17 years headlining Tufts, over 80 win percentage there, a 1995 national champion at UConn and bringing that pedigree, following what Courtney Banghart did now coaching UNC, but here at Princeton. Yes. So Columbia on the road coming in at 12-4, 3-0 in the Ivy in blue, going up against Princeton in white here at Jadwin Gymnasium. It's the first of two meetings between the squads in the regular season. Anthony Redden, Sarah Williams, and Crystal Apollanis are the officials. Redden tosses the ball up. Columbia controls in blue with Kitty Henderson. And we're underway from Princeton this afternoon. Concertive effort to go inside to Collins, one of the best facilitators, with the turnaround right over Chen. For Princeton, one note in their starting lineup. In her 76th career game, Chet Nowicki will make her first start down low, a senior. She replaces Parker Hill, Caitlin Chen, one of the focal points in the Princeton starting lineup. Yeah, somebody who's been playing well. And Chet Nowicki, you put that work in in practice, and the size that Princeton brings into this game, talk about Ellie Mitchell, is also one of their post players. So that, that's an area that they can try to exploit Columbia attack the, the spacing and the pace you're going to see from Columbia. We know Columbia, speaking of pace, but will want to push. By the way, the foul oh, was yeah. on Collins of Columbia. Here's Mitchell in that high post. We'll back it out here to Madison St. Rose. We'll document her today. Has really taken a step up from freshman to sophomore season. Chen, one of the focal points, was short that time. Contested by Shu, a fresh 20, a nice board. Who else from Ellie Mitchell? Hitting the offensive boards. I mean, there's few players better in the country right now than Ellie Mitchell and her ability to read and get that offensive board. And then look, Princeton gets a whole new life and they get a three out of it. Madison St. Rose, the sophomore delivering, leads the team nearly 16 points per game. Columbia starting with this alignment for the 10th consecutive game. Paige will be in that high post. Keep in mind the Henderson sisters, very dominant. Kitty is the point guard. Shu is the leading scorer in the Ivy as documented from the outset. Shu right on cue, hindered there. And you know, that's going to be a focal point today for the Prince of defense to try to deny Abby Shu. And if you can force a, you know, a step back fadeaway shot, that's the kind of, of shot you hope for if you're Princeton. And if you're Columbia, we well, actually gets everybody involved in the offense. So she's just as dangerous as a passer. How about those hands? 
Good steal there by Kitty Henderson and company. Get the foul on Caitlin Chen of Princeton. We expect this one to be a frantic pace coming in to this Ivy League matchup. By the way, this is the 78th meeting between the schools. Columbia won in overtime here last year. That was the Lions' first win, Brooke, since the 07-08 campaign, snapping a 27-game win streak for Princeton in the series. And Columbia, and rightly so, under, under Megan Griffith, has really climbed up the Ivy League rankings in recent seasons. And you, you look at, at the work that's been put in, and you can even just see it. I mean, the way that the players talk, it's the ownership of the type of program and, and, and really the culture that coaches want to create. Timeouts on the floor. We'll step aside here. Princeton up by one, just getting started here in Jersey. There's one of the top scorers of the Ivy, Princeton's Caitlin Chen. They were looking during the break for an unintentional disqualifying foul. Brooke, what did you see here on Chen? Well, Chen was, oh, okay. Chen was looking for that, that left extended uh, elbow coming from yeah. Columbia and felt like that was above the shoulder. So that's the play they wanted to get a good look at, but didn't see an angle where it looked like she made contact. Just called a common foul. Perry Pate scoring for Columbia takes the early lead. Two minutes in, Dave Leno, Brooke Weiss wrote, our entire crew on this Saturday afternoon from Jadwin Gymnasium on the campus of Princeton University. Boy, we expected this game to get a little chippy, yeah. but not so early now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Keep an eye, Belker, very good freshman there on the, the opposite side of the wing. Down low, here's Chen with five to shoot on the mismatch with Page with the pull-up. Chen strong the whole way. Mitchell didn't look like she got it off. Anthony Redden and Sarah Williams, the officials confer, and the shot clock violation there on the Tigers. Well, good defense from Columbia. They stayed patient. They didn't foul. They gave room to give away a, a contested shot from Chen. That's what you want. Look, two players coming at her, hands extended. And Coach Barubi upset the way that her team handled that possession. Columbia comes in winning 10 in a row. Three straight Ivy League wins over Penn, Cornell, and Yale. All at home beginning a two-game road swing. Two turnovers to start here for the Tigers. Henderson, the kick out. Page looking to score. She's got back-to-back. -back. The way Columbia's offense is so spread out when their guards drive, and you suck in any help side defense, that's where those kickouts can be so dangerous. Some may be familiar with her last name. Her father played at Pitt. Julius Page from 2000 to 2004 brings that pedigree inside. Fell on this end here against the Lions, up by four. It is against Page. It is her first and the team's second. The aforementioned freshman Sky Belker comes into a experienced Princeton lineup. Sky Belker at 20 at UCLA, 18 against Seton Hall. Here's our featured ESPN women's basketball matchup for tomorrow afternoon. Angel Reese in number 10 LSU hosts Arkansas at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. Coverage begins at 5 Eastern, 4 Central. Keep in mind LSU, a 16-game win streak snap Tuesday against Auburn in a loss by 5. Arkansas also coming off of a win against Alabama. Spencer at 31 points in that game. It's a two-point game here. Nice move, dash into the cup for Fliss Henderson, the younger sister of Kitty. There's so many scores on this team, and, and you love the pace at which they're attacking and then reloading. I mean, look at the energy coming off the Columbia bench right now. These ladies are hyped. We talked about how difficult of a place it is to play inside this gym. And so far, the Lions have started this game more aggressive and it's starting to pay off. Bell there, Brooke was on Belker. By the way, Columbia, four of five from the field to start to your point. Look at the one of five anemic number for Princeton to start here at home. Four game homestand here for the Tigers a bit away. Back to Henderson down low in the interior. The kick out page, extra pass, Collins for three. This is at that time the rebound to St. Rose. Let's see if they can get Madison going. And their leading scorer, coupled with what Caitlin Chen, as we documented, can provide right on cue. Yep. Rose inside yep. off the window. I love, I love that play. You, you bring Ellie Mitchell up top. You go off the screen so Mitchell can slip it 
And you have to stay with her because she's such a strong option. And then it gives St. Rose that ability to come off and hit that jumper. Collins, the pull up short the whole way, the rebound to Chen. Looking for back to back Belter, the three point oh, specialist. Yeah. Got it at home for Belter. It's the rhythm, right? Both teams trying to catch that rhythm. She has started every game as a freshman. Henderson off the whole way. Belker coming from Woodward High School, actually played high school ball with Juju Watkins, who's starting for USC. It's a 5 0 run here. Winston taking the lead by one. Here's Belker. That ball screen here. It's inside. Need to shoot here for Chen. Down low here for Nowicki, making her first career start, but a flail on this end, thanks to what Mitchell can provide down low. Back to the three here for the Tigers. Uh, you mentioned Belker, and it is time for her to come alive. And she's had just one double-digit game in her last four, so she's due, right? And talking to Coach Berube before the game, she said she's one of our players who gets in the gym, loves to be in there. That was on Fliss Henderson, by the way. And for those that have followed Princeton, why put Nuwecki in instead of Parker Hill for this one? As, as Hill's been the starting lineup, but there's a change there. There's an and one. Uh, that's a big time play for Caitlin Chen. To get that disagreement out of the way with the officials, uh, scoring almost always helps. But Chet Nuwecki has been playing really well, and that's simply the reason. You know, sometimes players in practice kind of catch that. Good job with the ball fake. Continuation for Chen to find that contact. Yeah, sometimes coaches, you know, it could be also with, you know, just a difference of de defensive philosophy, right? Say, hey, I like the way you guard this type of play a little bit better. But Chet been putting in the work and getting rewarded with the start. No doubt an 8 nothing run in the last one minute plus with Princeton up by four at home. Shoe contested by Belker, the freshman. Keep an eye on that matchup and a turnover here on the Lions. Stevens threw that away, intended for Collins. I like Princeton's defense there. They seem more intense, more willing to get up the line. And when you play Columbia, you're concerned about their spacing, their pace, and their speed. So Princeton's made early adjustments, and Mitchell is really good at drawing that kind of foul. Because I can tell you that that young lady, you cannot push her that easily. She can't go flying that easily. But if you get enough contact, you can sell that ball. That's important, right? That's an add, a value add to your team. By the way, Brooke, that is the second foul on Paige. It does put Princeton in the bonus. So with 409 to go in just the first quarter, Mitchell's going to go to the line. Yeah, so Columbia you know, she did get the contact. make some adjustments. Yeah, I mean, Paige definitely made that contact with the elbow. So great job by Mitchell. You know, she's a good uh, active player, so active players draw fouls. Well, Barubi has to like the run that her team has made here up by four with Mitchell has 14 career double-doubles, two this year, connecting there. With Princeton up by five, and Paige Morton, one of their bigs in the interior, is gonna come in for Chet Nowicki. There she is making her first career start in her 17th game play. So Morton coming down low here. Princeton going to go player to player all afternoon long, likely, on the defensive side. Cecilia Collins for three. In and out that time. Henderson tried to get the miss. Here's Chen instead. Chen's box out was excellent. Mitchell driving in. Chen met by Kitty Henderson. Belker looking for her second three. Chen going to get the set here from Carla Barubi and her staff. St. Rose, seven to shoot. Stevens was on her. Mitchell with three to shoot with the left hand. Ellie Mitchell in and out. Morton wanted the miss. Stripped away by Stevens for the Lions. Look at Mitchell. She can guard right. anybody. One through five, Brooke. You gotta love the way she plays defense. You gotta guard the ball in transition. That's the number one most important thing. Stop the ball. You can always switch players later. Raffu oh! coming in off the bench on that beautiful cut from Collins, but unfinished business for Susie Raffu to swap for. It's a beautiful looking pass. What a play. But that well, gives you life. You know, if you were able to make those kind of plays, you know, all right, scoring's going to come next. Just keep moving the ball. St. Rose, good move there. 
Called in by Shu, who's been quiet at the start of this game. Columbia 0 for its last five. Remember, they started the game yep. 4 of 5. Shu with the floater off the heel. Who wants it? It's Rafu inside, left hand. She'll draw the contact. Can you believe how intense this game has started off? I mean, it was 100 miles an hour from the go. You just love the way that these ladies are putting it out there on the line. It's been physical, fast. See great athleticism. The, the defense of Chen to hang with Shu there and for Shu to still jump up and get that shot. But, you know, I think we identified it early on. With, it, it's going to be rebounds. And to me, offensive rebounds. Whoever gets more in this game, I feel, is going to get the win. I think that's well stated. The top, one of the to top rebounding teams in the league in what Princeton can provide on the interior. We documented from Mitchell and also bringing players in like Nowecki and what Paige Morton can provide off the bench. But what you're seeing from both schools is like a minimum of two players attacking the glass immediately <laughs> for both the offensive and defensive boards. Yeah, it's important. And both coaches would like to push, but look what Columbia is doing, 77 a game, and shooting at a nice clip too. So that tells you how disciplined they're being on their shots and their shot selection. Top scoring team in the Ivy League going up against the top defensive team in the Ivy. St. Rose met by two. Mitchell weak side. It was a good run from her, but came up a little bit strong. It was tipped by St. Rose. And here comes Kitty Henderson from North Curl Curl, Australia. It's about 40 minutes north of Sydney for her and her sister Fliss, junior to freshman respectively. Shu with Chen, star-studded matchup. There's the Abby Shu we know and love. I know you guys heard that nice swish coming down and a good shot by Shu. Never phased. The next shot is the best shot. She's over there talking up the play, communicating with her team on defense. Her first field goal, Brooke, keep in mind, one of three to start the contest. Chia off the bench. That was smooth. That's a Brooke Weisbrot shot. <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> but that was an answer is what it was. Look at Rafi, Chia. other end. She walked, though, Brooke. Going to go the opposite way. Turnover on the Lions. You're watching two of the best teams in the Ivy go at it today. This is greatness. Shoe. Just a little shake-off jab step, a little rhythm three. Yes, ma'am. And the answer, the pull-up left side. Please. Such a beautiful sound when that ball hits the net like that. And Chia actually went to the same high school as Caitlin Chen when she was a freshman, and Caitlin was a senior over in Flint Ridge Prep in California. Chen was on the ball at St. Rose with the pull-up that time. Short the whole way. Kenny Henderson gets the miss, flips it out here to Chu. Remember, she last had a three. Great footwork by Henderson to get control of that basketball. Look at the second foul there on Caitlin Chen. That's her second. Remember, she has two, and the same thing with Paige for Columbia broke yeah. with two as well. That's a big deal. I mean, a lot of coaches have the philosophy. It looks like Coach Ruby is going to make the substitution. Two fouls, you sit for the rest of the half. Sky Belker's going to come back in, the freshman. With 50 seconds to go here, the first Princeton up by three. If you're just joining us, Columbia had the better start. Princeton then went on an eight nothing run. Chu with the dish, St. Rose was there. Eight to shoot for Stevens along the baseline. That's a travel, that's a good call there. Fliss Henderson walked. Sarah Williams all over that, back to the Tigers. Columbia trying to do a little too much, in my opinion, on that possession. And Princeton obviously irked that Chen had picked up her second foul. So, yeah, with that in mind, you felt the intensity of their defense step up. And you love that these two teams have that identity to them, right? Princeton is, is getting stops, getting it locked down. And Columbia is, they want those assists and want to keep that pace up. It's one of the best scoring teams in the country. Two seconds separate the game and shot clocks. Kamasanya just came in. She was sick the last two games. That's a three from Belker yet again. Her second triple. Princeton up by six. Told y'all she was due. Keep your eye on number 10 for Princeton. She might have a day. If Stevens gets it back here with three to shoot. Over to shoot. Try to beat the timer. She got fouled from Chia. Question is, was it from three? With 0.7 to go in the first frame. 
Well, Coach Berube obviously having a teaching moment right now with their young player, and you can see the contact on the arm. And it'll give Shu, who's a great free throw shooter, a chance to cut into this lead. Abby Shu to the line for Columbia for three shots. Shu shooting three, by the way. The foul was on Chia, the hardest worker in the gym, according to head coach Megan Griffith. She wins sprints. She hasn't lost a sprint, the coach said, since freshman year, <laughs> bro. Freshman year. That'll keep the pressure on your teammates, yeah. you know? You get, just got to remind them. Uh, you got to make sure you all catch up to me now. <laughs> but she's so competitive, and that's what I love. I mean, that to me is the kind of culture that that other younger players will take on immediately. And that's what we talked to Coach Griffith about, too, is how she sets that stage. Has turned the corner of communication as well. Now she's a vocal leader. Three-point game, and that will do it for the first quarter. You are watching a pro right there in Abby Shu. Princeton, though, with a strong surge to end the first frame, led by their three-point shooting. Yeah, Princeton can hit it from deep, and quite a few can as well. And St. Rose and Belker already off to a good start. Start of the second quarter here at Princeton, up by three over Columbia. We flash back to the last two NCAA tournament wins for the Tigers. Princeton top number six, Kentucky in Bloomington. The Tigers led for more than 37 minutes. That was the Tigers' second NCAA tournament win. Abby Myers with 29. They held Kentucky's Howard to four field goals. Last year, a huge win. Greystone nailed a three with four point seconds left in Salt Lake City. And it was the Tigers' second straight win in the first round of the NCAA. In fact, keep this in mind in Ivy League history, the first NCAA tournament teams to go and get back-to-back -back tournament wins since Harvard men did it in 2013 and 14. That's the pedigree of what Carla Berube is building here in Princeton. Right. You look up and, and you see a lot of Ivy League champion banners, NCAA Final Four, Princeton on the men's side. Then you look at the women's side and you've got the same you know, uh, baseline started. Ivy League champions and the Carla Berube in just five seasons has put together a team and carrying on the tradition here of excellence at Princeton. Mitchell inside, strong the whole way. The board here to Collins. Dave Leno, Brooke Weiss wrote, started the second quarter here in this Ivy League matchup, a battle of the unbeatens, Columbia against Princeton, fourth conference game for both schools. Another turnover on Henderson and Columbia. And what do you make here of all the turnovers on the lines and the defensive pressure for the Tigers? Yeah, good point. I was just about to talk about that because you, you know, you're not typically seeing a lot of turnovers from Columbia, so credit Princeton's defense. And, and the fact that they're making them play even faster, perhaps, than they want to. And Princeton doing a good job defensively, just making Columbia feel uncomfortable. The turnovers on Columbia saw a moment ago, just two for the Tigers. St. Rose pull up here. There's one field goal in it, Mitchell the board. Belker has a couple of frees with the floater, yes, for Sky Belker. He's so smooth. I mean, it has great control of the ball, of, of her body, and her footwork. Seven double-figure games this year. They said she was college-ready immediately when she got to Princeton's campus. Stevens, good look for Shu with six. Now give her eight in the game. Great cut by Shu. I mean, she reads angles so well. There's no wasted space in how Columbia operates its offense. Comes in ninth in Ivy League history in scoring with over 13. She can get to seventh today. She had met by Shu. With 12 to shoot here for the Tigers. High screen there from Pickley. To St. Rose. Pass Stevens off the window. That was better for Madison St. Rose. I like the extra movement. Usually I don't like a whole lot of dribbles, but St. Rose went left and then said, ah, I can get a closer, better shot. And she did. See how comfortable Princeton is on ISO basketball with, with St. Rose. Collins, back to shoot. There's the switch on D and another turnover. That's back to back on the Lions. All right, let's go back to that basket with Maddie St. Rose. She's shooting 44% from three, but this time she's a little hezzy, a little head fake, and a finish, I believe, with the left hand. 
By the way, Brooke, that's five turnovers on the Lions. What do they need to rework on the, the offensive end, do you think? Just be patient, right, and, and take your time with the cuts. I mean, right now, Princeton is, is really doing a good job of scouting you well offensively. Right away there from oh, Belker. Set it inside for Nowecki. A turnover there on the Tigers back here to the Lions. And Nowicki starting for Parker Hill. We haven't seen Parker play today, but Parker's been really good at eight points last game. She has started since the Quinnipiac game. She had 14 in that matchup earlier this year. And the best point guards of the Ivy. I'll say the nation in Kitty Henderson up top working with Shu. Chu getting positioning, looking for 10, short the whole way. Cliss Henderson, the freshman with the board, need a kick out here. Loose ball, Mitchell dives for Princeton, tries to get it to Nowecki, who took a hard hit by Shu. Let's see who the foul's on. Yep, I, I, I see what Crystal Apollana said. So initially, she pointed in the direction of Princeton and got the call right the opposite way. The foul will be called on the Tigers. Yeah, on the wing. I'm going to say it's going to go against Shu. Wow. Shu was pointing like in affirmation that the call was going in her direction. That's what Megan Griffin is contending here, bro. Yeah, I, the collision itself was so intense and happened right in front of us. So that's the yeah, second that's hard, on Abby Shu. Yeah, and that's a hard call to make, right? Yeah. So now you got Chen with two and Shu with two. Right, and you're trying to understand, you know, who had the rightful position. I mean, it's hard to just say, hey, that was a basketball play and keep it moving. <laughs> Somebody got to get called for a foul there. Got two bodies on the floor. Yeah, I like the hustle there yeah. by she and the wiki. Rose, over to Falker inside. Here's the wiki coming in with the right hand. Good move down low for Chet the wiki. Sometimes players in their first career starts, right? It's like it's like under the spotlight, how am I gonna be? Nowicki's heard that hit, and she said, give me the ball. Give me the ball on the block. Yeah, congrats to her again. 76 career game, first start. Battle in practice have earned these minutes. Although, deep rotation for both schools really doesn't matter, as the coaches say, who's nice. in that starting lineup, right? Collins with the turnaround. Tough shot for her. We'll stay on this end. Okay, so again, Nowicki takes that hit, very next play. Gets the ball on the block, patiently bodies and explodes and hits a tough shot. Then down here, defends and causes a four shot out of bounds, you know, reset. But but that's the effort that, that you ask, hey, why is she a starter? Because of that. Because that is probably what she's doing in practice. The should keep in mind here for the Lions over Henderson right at us. Brooks ready. Same with our statistician, Tom Benerbo. That's the third turnover in this quarter alone here for the Lions. And they have to reset. And certainly Coach Griffith is upset about that. You can see you know, her trying to have the right conversation with Kitty Henderson right now. And, and she wants the movement. She wants the spacing. Last possession, we saw five Columbia players outside the three-point line. It's no surprise to anybody that's followed Princeton. The active hands, known yeah. for their stealthy defense. St. Rose, left hand. That's, that's really good positioning for a left hand. Wow. And I love the way that she turns the corner and stays low. And a lot of players will come up, and she kept control of that ball and able to finish left side. But she's got nine in the game. Kitty Henderson met by St. Rose. There's the foul, looks like, on Madison that time. See if they can get Kitty Henderson on the offensive side of the game. I know she's the facilitator, but she can be that scoring threat as well. Yeah, double digits her last four games, getting about four offensive rebounds a game, five assists. Yeah, she's, they need her involved and get going to be a major part of this offense. And she hasn't scored so far in the game. That was on the wiki, it is her second. Matthew comes back into the game here for Columbia. Collins, the versatility from her. It's the fadeaway there for Cecilia Collins. Talk about her last four games. She's really stepped up and done it efficiently. Great touch against Nweke. Chia, that was a majestic play. Let's see if Collins can get going. The transfer from Bucknell coming off that last basket. Henderson 
Took immediately two bodies on Kitty Henderson. You know Brooke, that's on the scout. Alternating possession, stays on this end. As Parker Hill's gonna come in for the first time. The timeliness of the double teams has been really effective for Princeton. I've seen them you know, do it a couple times today to shoe this time. Henderson gets the double. Right, when you spin move, you can't see who's behind you, so you're gonna meet a body. And they're doing a great job, Princeton is, of getting the hands on the basketball. Hill trying to derail Collins. Stevens gets two in the air, down low for Raffu, draws the contact. That's a good look there for Stevens. She's getting a lot of minutes early on in this game. I was speaking with Megan Griffith about this player here, Susie Raffu, who's at the line, and watching tape on her. Not, not only does she have low post moves like you just saw, but I, yeah. I was impressed, Brooke, with the vision that this post player provides too, and her passing ability. That's the way of the game, you know, it's it's positionless basketball, and I love to see that out of post players. And that's what you would expect from a system like Columbia that's very guard dominant, right? That you got posts you can play, and you know, Susie's aunt, Taiwo, is uh, on the Nigerian national team. So, so auntie's got that work in, maybe helped her out with some passing along the way. There's a lot of trust in her teammates, yeah. consistent in practice. Comes up short there, seven point game. Belker again for three. She is feeling it here at home. Board here, Princeton trying to get it with Maury Bickley, the freshman, will go back to Columbia. Number five remaining here in the first half. Houston still looking for her first bucket, that's Kitty. Riley Weiss coming into the game as well. The freshman, very impressed of her play. Collins over to Weiss on the screen. With the pull up there, gets it off the window. Nice play there by Weiss. Down to a five point game. Here come the Lions. St. Rose push away from the ball. Here against Kitty Henderson, against Ellie Mitchell of Princeton. Ellie Mitchell drawing that foul again. Yeah. Look how far away from the basket she is. I mean, that at times can be as good as a turnover. We'll take us to a timeout. Brooke with Princeton up by five, and the play of St. Rose has been shining at home. She has really put in the work, and it's paid off. I'm talking about eight points to 15 points a game in one summer. Patty St. Rose has been getting it done, and Princeton's got the lead. 422 to go into the break. Princeton up by five over Columbia in a battle of unbeatens in an Ivy League showdown. Princeton has won eight consecutive games. Their last loss was on December 3rd at Rhode Island. They have won three straight Ivy by 23 points or more. Had a couple close losses by UCLA by three. I mentioned Rhode Island by two, also to Indiana by mine. But what do you make about what Carla Berube is building here, trying to get this team again back to the NCAA tournament like the last couple of years? You have to challenge your team, and you do that with that type of schedule. And give credit to both teams who you know, put that schedule together and did it early. I mean, to me, that always gets teams conference ready and more competitive. And to your point, right. 40th in the net, that tops the Ivy, Columbia at 66. Barubi is 43 and two against other Ivy League teams. I mean, the Ivy is, you know, when you have schools that just go one bid, right, you have to have teams like this. Wouldn't you want to see both of these teams in the NCAA tournament, right? 100%. So this is a kind of league where when you have teams that are playing this well, somebody's going to deserve an at-large bid. So that's why I like when you ask me a schedule question, so you can give a team an at-large bid when you say, oh, okay, we see what you did against UCLA or Oklahoma, Rutgers, you know, we know. Or Indiana, excuse me, not Rutgers. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it makes a difference come selection time. You make excellent points. This has to be a multi-big league. I would love to see it, and I'm saying that because Columbia last year was the first team out. Some pundits had them in. St. John's was the last team in. The team went to the WNIT championship, lost to Kansas. Good cut inside, Belker, top 
compliments a Mitchell with the offensive rebound. Brooke, you highlighted that from the outset, and rightfully so. Hooker up with the assist, too. What a bounce pass. Princeton made that play look easy. Right here, if you're Columbia, you're sitting there, oh, we played defense for 29 seconds, we forced a corner three, great. And then who comes in and ruins the day for you? Ellie Mitchell. It's 10 second half short points by the Tigers. Just a pallid one here for Columbia inside Collins with the turnaround. That's good for Collins. CC toughness right there. And patience. You never see her rush anything. Even though this Columbia offense is fast, CC is not one to rush. They were excited to get her from her playing days over the last two years at Bucknell, where she averaged 14 points per game. St. Rose short the whole way. Collins was in her way, Brooke. You called it. Here's Fliss Henderson. If Columbia could get going here, down by five, Collins again, right place, right time, and a foul! Well, I kept waiting to see when that pass was Princeton coming, and Ellie Henderson Mitchell was driving deeper and deeper, and the dish off paid off. Take another look at this one, here's the three. Of course, Mitchell's on the ground, but good job by Henderson. He's the fast break. She gets deep, there's the bounce pass right there. <laughs> Collins has only missed seven free throws all season. She leads the Ivy League, close to 87%. Give her nine points in the game. Closes it to just a two-point game. You knew this would be a game of runs here, the Battle of Unbeaten here, the Ivy. Both teams again coming in 3-0 and in conference action. And how about the trust in Coach Griffith to put Shoe back in the game? Two yep. fouls, Savvy Shoe number 35 and Blue. If I'm Maddie St. Rose, I'm going right at Shoe, trying to get that third. Going inside the Morton off the bench. Good Great low play. post move and good patience there by Morton. Great pass to Sky Belker on the wing. Henderson takes it in, and that's what they need more of Kitty Henderson yes. to score from. The shoe is on St. Rose, by the way. Middle of your screen. Here's Chia is going to run the points. Chia for three. Off the whole way. Big board. Comes Riley Weiss. Columbia can tie with a two. Go in front here with Weiss. Got it for Columbia, who regains the lead. Dave Lego two, and you can go three. What a confident shot. Four lead changes in our first half. Princeton was up by nine. Chia off the ball here with Belker. Over a minute to go. Malecki walked, turnover on the Tigers, back to the Lions. Well, Columbia did it inside first. Hitting that bounce pass with the end one, then the outside three to make it work. And take the lead, what a big time shot by Riley Weiss. The Lions were clinging to a 10-2 run. Shu playing as Brooke mentioned with two fouls. Got a foul away from the ball. Look like it went against Norton, the illegal screen. That's her first, the team's fourth. Number five to the bonus. So Kitty Henderson and company will uh, dial up here on the inbounds play. Side here, good kiss off the window here for the Lions. Coming Sanye, who missed the last two games due to sickness, back in and scoring. Up by three, inside for St. Rose, brings it back to a one point game. Seesawing back and forth. And my guess is they're going to have two high ball screens here. Here comes that other post with the horns action. When coach calls that, you get two screens for the post players right at the free throw line. Two seconds separating the timers here. Brooke with Kitty Henderson. Asanye. Kick out here. Three on the way in front of the Princeton bench. Buckets there for Stevens. 
Two seconds to go here for Chia. Has to hoist up a prayer. She will not. That will do it for a back and forth first half. Columbia goes into the locker room, leading here by four. I mean, this game has changed hands, changed dynamics a few times already in just one half of basketball. Woo! That felt like a whole game we just played. I hope they come out with another ener more energy here in the second half. A 15-4 run for Columbia to end that one. They have quartered eight of the last nine field goals. A lot of play by Kitty Henderson and company. Page has played with two fouls. Strong first half for Cecilia Collins and company. Shoe also with a couple of fouls, but getting stronger into the game. L. Duncan, Andrea Carter, Rebecca Lobo. Halftime report next. Here at the break at Princeton, the Lions lead by four over the Tigers in Ivy League action. Welcome courtside with Brooke Weisbrod. I'm Dave Leno. Great to have you with us. We've had four lead changes, a frantic pace up and down, but how about the strong surge to end the half for Columbia? Right? I mean, you shoot 8 of 10 or, or excuse me, 9 of 11 in the second quarter. That's how you get it done efficiently on the road. That's a tough thing to do. But credit the way that Princeton is coming out defensively. I mean, they're trying to combat the offensive uh, guru that is the Columbia Lions. So, so they're doing a great job of stepping up. We expected to see this, right? Run. Met with a run. Yeah, Princeton hasn't trailed at all in their three previous Ivy League actions. Let's get right to the first half highlights, beginning with the play from three of Belker and company for Princeton. Yeah, Princeton got some good looking threes and shot three of eight there in that first half. Sky Belker was two of three, so she really added a lot. Also hit a couple free throws and shot four or five. 12 points for her, and Maddie St. Rose also helped out a lot too. She had 11 on five of 12 shooting. And for Columbia, it wasn't Shu. I mean, Shu had eight points, yes, but you talk about being able to distribute, distribute the ball. A couple players really coming up. Riley Weiss and Perry Page, both two of two in that first half. Comes out. Talk about that second quarter offense. Nine of 11 for the Tigers. And Columbia ended the quarter with a 19-6 run. You see the numbers from three for Columbia, one of the better three-point shooting teams that you mentioned, Brooke, and I think this will help Princeton moving forward those second half points. Yeah, it's, you know, you look at both teams, they're capable of putting together runs, and we knew the one from Columbia was going to come. I, a 9 of 11 quarter is just outstanding basketball, so I'm sure Princeton's going to step up that defense, try to make sure that doesn't happen again. Shu has been mired here with two fouls. She has eight. But a big story for me and you talking at the break. How about Caitlin Chen? Only played nine minutes. Again, she is held to two fouls and only three points in this one. Has yes. to have a big second half. Chen didn't catch her rhythm in the first half. The foul trouble and then, you know, didn't feel like uh, she agreed with a couple of calls. So I'm sure she had some time during halftime to be able to just let that settle in. Her coaching staff, they're actually over there talking to her right now. And Maddie St. Rose trying to get them dialed in and ready here for the start of this third quarter. Someone that will, uh, Princeton will rely on heavily, the Ivy League Player of the Year last year in the Ancient Eight. Now, speaking of winning streaks, as mentioned, Columbia is looking for a program record 11th consecutive win. They had 10 last year, in fact, thanks to the overtime win right here at Princeton. Princeton comes in with eight consecutive wins. You see what South Carolina and Iowa under Caitlin Clark, who's a glitter company, have provided as well. <laughs> I mean, not only wins, sell out arenas, we got dunks. It's the women's game is in such a great spot. And talking with both these coaches today, just, just asking the question like, what do you think about the game right now where women's basketball is headed? Just huge smiles. So congrats to all these teams. Like, that's greatness. Latest AP Top 25, you have South Carolina, Iowa, Colorado had their nine-game win streak snap last game and a loss to UCLA. It was at five. The Bruins playing really well. Also, the Wolfpack with a strong surge this season as well. Juju Watkins, I mentioned, USC, one of the top scores, along with Colorado State's Kenna Hobbschild as well. Good for 25 points per game. All right, Brooke, here we go. Columbia up by four. As mentioned, Princeton has never trailed in Ivy League action this year. Let's see the resurgence here to start the third quarter. See Chen, balls in her hands yep. right away, draws yep. the contact, but a foul the opposite way. She was out of bounds. Will be a turnover here on Chen and the Tigers. No personal. But I like it though. Get the ball to your leader. You know, Chen 
She's a very decisive player, says, I'm gonna get right to that rim. Didn't get the points, but you obviously see the strategy for Princeton. All right, let's get our star involved. Collins had a terrific first half, had nine points. Shoe with eight. Zinach now setting the screens at the charity stripe. Page with two fouls, looking for one there. And an offensive foul looks like called against Page. That will be her third. Okay, so in not even a minute's time, Caitlin Chen gets right to the rim. Yep. Kind of shows, all right, I'm back to offensively. Then comes and takes a charge on the defensive end. That is leadership, that's adjustment, that's being a mature player. She was the first half, right? In response. She was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the wiki, right, on a, on, a, on a call, on a loose ball that did not go her way since then. She came out, gets a touch, second consecutive play, scores that time gliding through air. Take that, she says. I got more, more in my bag. She's got five points in this one. Here's Paige playing with three fouls. But a Fliss Henderson driving baseline. St. Rose trying to stop her. Nice what a move. move by Fliss. Couldn't get the miss. Mitchell corrals it. Chen. That was deflected. Nice play by Collins here for Columbia. Still up by two. Fliss Henderson gives it up down low. Page misses. Gets the rebound and she'll go to the line. Good transition offense for Columbia. If you're Princeton, you got to stop the ball much faster than that. But until they make you make a decision, that's where Fliss Henderson can really shine out in that open floor. St. Rose challenged on the inside there. Page putting up five forward seven points over the last three games. And you mentioned the Henderson sisters, both Kitty and Fliss, coming from about 40 minutes north of Sydney. There's a relationship between the staff of Columbia, Megan Griffith, and a, and a guy by the name of Tim Hill in Australia. They were look, the Henderson sisters were looking to play high-level collegiate basketball at an institution like Columbia here in the States. And that's why they're at Columbia. Fliss following her sister Kitty and, and, and flourishing with all their international experience in Australia as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, I love the fact that it's an international game and, and Columbia you know, has that type of rosters. There's seven international players on this roster. All right, Chad. Inside, she couldn't get it that time though. Brooke Mitchell the miss, who else? But threw it away to Fliss Henderson. Good start to this third quarter. Stolen away ball. by St. Rose. Rose, left hand, good for Madison. Great job by Maddie St. Rose. You make an in-game adjustment, and that's what happens. When you stop Henderson sooner, you might be able to get that steal, and she did. Ooh. Here's Shu, good baseline, ball fake on Mitchell. Shu trying to get their own miss. Here comes St. Rose on a 1v2. Slithering through the lane, right hand, tough shot by Rose. Who wants the board? Belker keeping it on this end. Possession will go back to Columbia. Back to what St. Rose can provide, bro. Not only offense for your team, but a great job deflecting the basketball and pushing it out in transition. And Henderson thought she had a clear path. And St. Rose with the quick hands. I mean, the rookie of the year last year. Five 20-point games, 13 double-figure games this year for St. Rose. Columbia up by two. Tell you, Henderson's layup back late in that second quarter helped propel Columbia to their strong surge. Shoe again, ball fake, right hand, can't get the roll. Mitchell, shove there. It's out of bounds off of Mitchell. No call there, and Kitty Henderson will stay on this end. two of seven so far today playing with two fouls up top for Kitty Henderson Chen at the swipe 17 to shoot on the timer Henderson to get over to her younger sister Fliss St. Rose on her with five to shoot Fliss gives it up shoe from 16 no Again, Sky Belker, a freshman, is doing a nice job defensively on Abby Shu today. She's forcing her to shoot difficult shots, and she's not giving her a whole lot of space. So you see Shu trying to get one up, yep. but she's have to work so hard just to get separation. 
St. Rose taking Fliss Henderson. Oh, a good look for Mitchell. Compliments of St. Rose. Locked up at 39. First tie. See Back again. to shoot. Yep, that's a tough defense there. It, it, it just staying in front, right? Not trying to do too much. Look at that cut from pass. Kitty, though. Woo. That was filthy there for Kitty Anderson. I'm talking about compliments, Columbia. right, all night long. A deep three to a deep three. A great pass for a great pass. Beautiful dime there from Shu. Chen's team down by two. Elker keeps it in play. Elker two of three from downtown. Good shot fake there from Scott Belker, a freshman that's playing like a senior yeah, today. Right, kept that foot down. I know y'all watching at home held your breath. That left foot, the toenail stayed down. She's got 14. Started every game as a freshman. Chen looking to push yet again. The window that front for Chen went off the heel there. Fliss Henderson has the miss for Columbia. See if they settle a little bit here with Fliss. So she wants to push pace. Got the wiki falling. It shoe the pull up. Another second chance point here for Columbia. I know that margin is favored Prince, and it's a big play from Kenny Henderson, really setting the tone on both sides. Yeah, it helps. I mean, offensive rebounds are precious gems. You know, in a game like this, where it is going to come down to a possession, a box out. Henderson floats it up here. Gets the call. Nice play by Kitty Henderson, who's all over the place here for Columbia. Yeah, I mean, that's that's as tough a shot as they come. You got to get real creative. And Columbia got bailed out, getting the offensive rebound. Chen able to box out effectively at times. By the way, that is the third foul on Chen. Here's our first ESPN Big Monday doubleheader of the season. R.J. Davis, a number four North Carolina. Lead the ACC. They host Wake Forest at 7 Eastern. Then it's off to Allen Fieldhouse for number three, Kansas at Cincinnati. Should be a great night of hoops also available on the ESPN app. Was watching the other night when Kansas fell at UCF in Florida. Oh, yeah. One of our uh, fellow commentators, Michael Donald, got hit by a shoe in that celebration. Got hit by a shoe in the call in the game. That was in jubilation, no? though, bro. <laughs> That's good. As long as it was in that way. Right. Big 12 is just stacked this year. That is. On both sides, both the men's and the women's. Two point lead here for Princeton. Anderson looking down low. Weiss coming off the bench. Shoe for three. Big board for Mitchell. Watching one of the top rebounders in the nation coming in at 13th in the nation. She's got 12. Good luck inside there. The Wiki gets four compliments of St. Rose, distributing, also scoring today. That is Princeton basketball. You get separation, you get spacing, and you make it simple. Terrific bounce pass inside for the assist. Really marveled at the game and the development of St. Rose. We've complimented her, and rightfully so today, from freshman to sophomore year. Henderson, backdoor cut to shoe. What a look there from Kitty Henderson to shoe. Again, it's the answers for the passing. I mean, these ladies came to play today. Look at the look up. Hit it with a finish, almost. And wow. everything but the bucket there for Belker. Belker. She's got it together. It's got a fun game. Yeah, she does. But Sonya couldn't handle that. Goes back here for St. Rose. Princeton up by two. St. Rose dashing it right past Raffu with the Euro step roll. The moves just keep getting better, don't they? And there's Shu getting ahead of the game. Looks like a full court weave drill there to Shu. That's right. Cannot lose sight of Shu because she's not going to give up. It's like running full court sprints <laughs> in the Coastal Carolina days, bro. Oh, I wish. Nowacki draws the contact. Komisanya was in her way, which will at last take us to a break here in the third with 3.08 to go. And how about the play of St. Rose this afternoon? Leading the team in points, threes, and steals in the season. Trying to get it done again today. Maddie St. Rose having a huge impact on this game. Columbia's Abby Shue starting to heat up. Started two of 12. She has made her last two field goals. You're seeing one of the best scorers in Columbia history, just behind Camille Zimmerman, who starred for this team from 14 to 18. One of the top scorers, not just in Columbia history, Brooke, but in Ivy League history as well. She needs just one point to move into seventh 
all time in Ivy lore. She is one of the best to, to come through in Ivy League and has done it against big schools, right? We said 25 on Duke, 29 on Florida. And her, her biggest growth there is not just in scoring, but how she's become more of a vocal leader, how she's setting the, the tone and the culture for this, this program. And it all came about after experience with USA Basketball. It influenced her, and, and she saw what it took to get to that next level. And there's no way that you're going to spend time around players like Janiya Barker, Rakia Jackson, Deja Kelly, Angel Reese, and not come back and be a better leader. Princeton up by three. The USA basketball experience so crucial to the collegiate level as well. Collins comes up short. Remember, she had a monstrous, I'm saying that in a good way, first half here for the Lions. And here's Chen with her team up by a tread. 240 at a rolling clock here in the third. Dave Leno, Brooke Weisbrot, our entire crew from Princeton. Chen inside, met by Henderson with the right hand. And that's a strong bucket. I like how Chen has started this third quarter way more aggressive. I mean, even the box out on the last defensive rebound that she got to get him back into offense, and she's playing with, with an edge to it. She's got seven points, Brooke, in the matchup here. They're going to get Weiss, who initially gave Columbia the lead in the first half right hand. She gets the roll here on the road. That's a tough shot. I mean, it's hard. Chris is making it hard just to get into the paint. With better prep careers out of Nassau County than moved to Florida for her senior year. Here comes Chen, though, lining up for Princeton. She comes at that high ball screen. She's so low and quick, can turn the corner. It's tough to stay with her. And then post players got to try to find the blur once she gets in there moving so fast and can test the shot. Great job by Chen. Holland setting those screens here. St. Rose on her. Fliss Henderson with her team down by five. Weiss, the freshman, she on her. Good behind the back. Pull up there from Weiss. Mitchell's got the border 13th in the game. Nowicki making her first career start with the reverse. How about that, Chen? Give me first step. Give me reverse. <laughs> A little English. Okay, Chet Nowecki said, I think I like it here in this starting lineup, Coach. Keep me around, would you? And Kenny Henderson drawing the foul on Chen. If it's on her, that will be her fourth in the game, bro. Back to the other end. Yeah, this is beautiful. Face up, quick move, explodes. Just read the defense here. Huh. Love that. A power dribble and a finish. Brooke Chen has to come out. Right there by the four foul, she has nine points in this one. Four of nine shooting. Shoe on the other end in our star watch, four of 14 for 12 points. It's tough when, when you're one of the best players in the league and one of the leading scorers for your team and you have the off day because of fouls, it's really tough to, to add to that consistency to your team. But I give a lot of credit to Caitlin Chen because when she comes in, she's immediately looking to be productive. Players like Cecilia Collins. I know Paige has been hit with a couple of fouls. She has three today. St. Rose, also with 16, averaging 15 as well, has stepped up along with Belker. Stevens back in with nine to shoot. This is Shu. Shu looking for her fifth field goal. She's got it that time. It's a big shot for Columbia. Yeah, and, and you can't guard her any better than Sky Belker, the way she did. Hand up, stayed with her step for step. That's just a better, better looking shot. From Shu. She's lighting up. That's three in a row for Shu. There's a turnover from Chia. Officials confer. Sarah Williams says to Anthony Redden, it should stay on this end. <laughs> yeah, the call got changed. Great spot by the official to see that the ball went off of the shoe of Abby Shu. <laughs> off you, Shu. Yep. <laughs> Five point game. Mitchell to Chia. Five seconds separate the timers. Good luck to Belker from Chia. Oh, that's a big fist pump from Chia. Great time by her. Going to get the set from winningest coach in Columbia history, Megan Griffith here. 
Shoes had the last three field goals in her hand, trying to beat the timer. Four in a row for the top five inning score, Abby Shue to end the third. And a five point game to end the third. Shoe delivering. Columbia trying to come back just down by five. Start of the fourth quarter. In Princeton, the Tigers lead here by five over Columbia, but here comes the top scorer in the Ivy League in Abby Shu, who has nailed her last four field goals, bro. Did not have a good start to this game. Did not shoot well until late. Never worried about it one bit. That's the confidence of a great player and a player who's going to be next level. Finds different ways to score, understands the rhythm. They're trying to take away her three. So, all right, let me pump fake and get a little more room. We've seen her go back door, right? But she's a competitor. So that game face is going to stay that game face, whether she's 2 of 20 or 18 of 20. Shoe in the first half was 2 of 5. In the third quarter, keep in mind, she started out 0 of 7. She has made the last four. Right. And the fourth quarter is underway from Princeton, New Jersey. Dave Leno, Brooke Weisbrot, our entire crew, Columbia. Princeton looking for that top spot in the Ivy to improve to 4-0. Belker gets the move. Unfinished business, though. Nowicki gets a big offensive board. Looks like the foul's on shoot. That's a big, big call. Big call. It's her third. Third. No. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I thought it was oh, her fourth. Yeah, me too. Her third. Caitlin Chen of Princeton does have four, though. St. Rose, that's a beautiful drive. Taking Stevens right to the rack. And I love the way that the way that she drove, she's able to protect her body. She's able to get the shot in as well. So for players that they that they lost in Julia Cunningham and Grace Stone and, and bringing a player like this in St. Rose and her pedigree from freshman to sophomore year, she's taken a big, big step. Here's our featured ESPN women's basketball matchup tomorrow afternoon. Angel Reese and number 10 LSU host Arkansas and Baton Rouge coverage begins again at 5 Eastern, 4 Central. Reese, tomorrow, big performances over about Alabama, 20 points in that game. Coming off of that win, St. Rose 17 points, 7 of 15 today. Princeton up by 7. Henderson, good luck. Raffu, reverse, yes! When Columbia can get deep into that paint, I love how patient they are. They pass really well, right? They're spacing from the post players. That's a good steal there from Weiss. Trying to beat St. Rose. Riley Weiss, out of foul for the Lions. Roaring here at Chadwin. How was Riley Weiss able to hold off St. Rose? What a great defensive play. She goes, she can sense it, see her keep turning her head, then moves the ball to the inside of her body and finishes the shot. That's a great play. That's hard. Double figures in her last two games. Let's start to this game with nine points. By the way, over a thousand rebounds in the career. Mitchell just grabbed her tenth there. Three point game. I'm also noticing Mitchell's the only one on the floor wearing knee pads. And who have we seen on the floor more than anybody else? Yep. Double zero right there on the ball. You're spot on. Eight to shoot. St. Rose to Nowicki. Nowicki inside with the fadeaway for Chet Nowicki. Nowicki. The fadeaway shot was a, a work of beauty, but what I loved even more than that, Dave, was all the work she did. Her feet, the strength it took to get in a position to get that ball. She made it easy for the guards to pass. Shoe pull up, Speaking smooth up, again from Abby. It's so nice. She's got such a balanced shot. No matter where she moves, she's always going to jump straight up. Two minutes to go in regulation here. Upper met by Raffu on the baseline D, right in front of the Princeton bench. Chia. It's a high ball screen, missed the whole way. Mitchell cleans up beautifully for the Tigers. Yeah. 
Stripped there by Chia. Kitty Henderson keeps it at play. He's going to get it over at back. They say Chia didn't touch it, Anthony Reddit. Going to go the opposite way and the turnover there. 12th turnover. Yeah, I think we're trying to figure out right here what the conflicting signals are. Let's take another look. Watch him up top, bottom of your screen, Anthony Reddit. So the official on the far side, Sarah Williams, did say she did that it was a tip. It's she did. She did. I don't know why they didn't confer there. Or we continue. Might have been a bad break. Five-point game. That's a walk there for the right. Officials on there. So there. There you go. He cancels out. Yep. We're all good. We're good. So Collins in the way. That's the ninth turnover there. Well, the Tigers. What do you want to see from this? Megan Griffin's side for Columbia to, to try to get this a stalemate here like they did early on in the game. Find Shoe. <laughs> Shoe's the one that's going to take you the rest of this way. She's warming up. She's feeling good. You see her out there chatting right in the middle of this offensive possession. Here she is right off the curl that side. Brooklyn Q over to CC. That's Collins. Miss Henderson. Move here inside, left hand net by St. Rose, dished it out, Raffew, tried the door of the contact, Columbia wanted it, they didn't get the call. That's locked in. Good defense from the Tigers. The way Chia comes in as a freshman, taking matters in her own hands, running the point as a backup point guard, with Chen Meyer by four fouls on the bench. Nice work by Chia today, and all yeah. season. Yeah. St. Rose, left hand amid the tree. She walks. And Carla Berube reminding St. Rose that he just jumps stop, play off two feet. So that's that tough defense there. St. Rose getting her hands on it. Mitchell does the same, and they come up with a rebound. A few setting the screens up top. Riley Weiss on the wing. Point game, Collins gives it up to Shue. Who else over? Belker for three. St. Rose wants to come off, off the ball. Chia got stripped there by Riley Wise, who lost it. Chia dives for Princeton. So does Columbia Shoe. Odd numbers here. St. Rose. Oh, St. Rose. What confidence on the softball. I can't believe she took that shot. Good take by Fliss Henderson. I'm with you. I'm like, she's going to drive. Yeah, you did. That think. was smooth. <laughs> What a great series here. Bodies everywhere, diving for the ball. These are the 50-50 plays that matter at the end of the game. Great heads up play, though, to get it back. And you thought, yeah, maybe a ball fake and a dribble. You now, it could be, right, if you think of awareness, she might have thought, hey, the shot clock's really running down. I don't have as much time. But then, yeah, it went in. Move on. Mitchell, by the way, Brooke picked up her third foul. Yeah, with Cliss Henderson at the line, and Cliss is a great defender. I, I just thought St. Rose was going right at Cliss Henderson, to your <laughs> point. Just pulled up and said, I got this. Yeah, oh. yeah, she may have thought the shot clock again was running down. It's her building, need a board. Her box Off out. the free throw, yep, St. Rose. Fourth on the team in scoring last year, St. Rose, just under nine points per game. Again, the Ivy Rookie of the Year. Over 16 points per game this year from the sophomore. Inside of Mitchell with the three fouls. Does it good get no called call. for an and one, but she took Riley Weiss with that mismatch down low. Yeah, I, that was a good no call. Henderson, the dish on the weak side Great there. Pass. Nice bucket over to Perry Page. Stops if you're Columbia. St. Rose finds Mitchell yet again over Shue, playing with three fouls. Too easy there for Mitchell. Compliments of St. Rose. What a good look, right? That's a cross court interior pass. High degree of difficulty, usually not recommended. But a skilled passer and great hands by Mitchell to catch and finish. Three points and 12 boards for Mitchell. Shoe the pull up there. Strong. Mitchell's got her 13th rebound. 
Brings it up by nine. Some empty possessions for Columbia as of late. Remember, they ended the first half on a Goliath 19-6 run. I mean, you could, you could argue right now, if this game were to end right now, Ellie Mitchell would be the player of the game, even though she's gotten only nine points. Yeah, she's kept you. this team alive. Chia backs up for three. See if Kitty Henderson could be that energizer and that, that trend center for this team, like in the first half with a big layup. Shoe, pull up. That was from Kitty Henderson, and Shoe, she has got the miss. See if she'll push here. She wisely reset it. I think you go down to Noeke again. Yep. Nine points, four of five in this one for Chet Nowicki, making her first career start. In there for Parker Hill in the starting lineup. St. Rose along the baseline, pulls up. She's got it. That's a deep two for St. Rose. First double-digit lead for the Tigers. Listen to them roar at Jadwin. Maddie St. Rose put some time in the gym this summer. What's that resulted in? Five 20 point games this year and a clutch shot to put. Can't wait for that one with Dawn Staley's team going up against Kim Mulkey's unit. But how about the game of Madison St. Rose? 21 points, 9 of 17 from the field here in the fourth with her team up big by 11. I love that she's taken the shots when the moment felt big. She stepped right into it, said, give me the ball, stayed calm and got it done. We've mentioned from the outset of the broadcast book, and you hit on this, rightfully so, the rebounding disparity. Princeton, by the way, not only dominating the boards, they haven't needed a three since the first quarter. They are 0 of 6 since then. And one of the reasons why we're on cue is the play, like you pointed out, Nellie Mitchell. She was so uh, vocal and active in their last huddle. I mean, I know that that's the way that she shows up every day, but we got a good look at it. And our camera's kind of being able to watch her. And Reed to come right out there and get the steal, and then the bucket to match. From Chen playing with four fouls, Mitchell delivers yet again for the Tigers. Largest lead at 13. And some field goals for Columbia, who's going cold as of late. Stevens, right on Caitlin Chen, gives it up. Belker, another three. Does she have three in her? No. Mitchell gets the miss. One of the top rebounders in the nation. She just tough. She gets that board. She just wants it. Got to play work. the clock if you're Columbia here, too. Yeah, no doubt. We'll take a timeout here, Brooke, with 2.17 to go. Princeton, long away from this one, trying to prove the 4-0 in the Ivy. Back in a moment. It is a party with Jadwin on the campus of Princeton University. The Tigers up by 13 over Columbia here at home. They have three double-figure scorers in Mitchell, Belker, St. Rose. Why do you think Princeton is, is starting to pull away here from Columbia, bro? Well, I think their intensity here, the defensive-minded the Princeton Tigers are. I mean, they got the lock down stops, and that young lady right there. Too strong. Strong. Has put up points today. Now she's in double digits, but it is the rebounding, the extra effort, and her just controlling the paint. 15 double double, 13 points, 14 boards. Raffu walked. Columbia, by the way, last loss, November 22nd, by two at the buzzer to Florida. And they haven't lost since November. Unfamiliar territory. Here for the Lions. Yeah, this is this is a game. I know they're going to want to go back and and either forget or look at that film all night long. It struggle, you know, shoot it and play up to the way that I think she would want to play, hitting the shots. Didn't give up at all, but you know, credit really Princeton. I think their defense stopped the pace of what Columbia wanted to do. It is a timeout here with Princeton up by 15, 150 to go in regulation. Timeout and be back on the other side. Back here, Princeton. Dave Leno, Brooke Weisbrot, our entire crew. The Tigers up big here over Columbia, led by head coach Carla Barubi. In her fifth year, coming from 17 years at Tufts, has taken this Tigers team 
going to the second round of the NCAA tournament in back-to-back -back years. See the pedigree that she has provided experience with USA Basketball, also starting her career at Providence, and all leading to what she's doing here for the Tigers. I mean, she has really put in the groundwork to be at this position right here, and then, you know, who knows what a prestigious job to have at Princeton. I'm sure she's her phone's been ringing, yep. <laughs> you know? And you look at the very bottom there, I mean, she did it at, at the D3 level, so you know, you're, you're doing the hustle work there. You're the only coach, you're out there recruiting, you're doing all the work that you get a full-time staff here. You know, so Barubi has, has grown this program and, and kept uh, the legacy of the women's basketball program at Princeton alive. By the way, there was an official review, not a team timeout as we went to break. It will be in the direction of the Tigers. You know, I, I was speaking with Barubi about about the transition of what Courtney Banger did here at Princeton and then what Barubi has brought. They really didn't adjust too much from what she did at Tufts to here. This is exactly what the officials were looking at. They looked like it went off the page instead of Chen. So it should be Princeton ball out of the official review with 1.50 to go. And her first recruiting trip, she was telling us, you know, to UConn when Jen Lizzetti was there, Rebecca Lobo on those recruiting trips, oh, wins wow. the first title under Gino Oriama yeah. in 95, two Final Fours. Brings that playing pedigree from Oxford, Massachusetts, here to Princeton. Had a lot of familiarity with her staff, obviously, as well. St. Rose is going to inbound here. Game's leading score with 21 points. The outlet over to Chen, one of the top scorers in the Ivy. Drawn up from Barubi. It's icing on the cake for the Tigers today. And Chen getting a loose ball. How about it? Bunch of those 50-50s and the dives there. We'll stay on this end for Megan Griffith's Lions. Okay, so where do you go from here? What are the big takeaways here for Columbia this afternoon? You know, they were not able to enforce their will. All right, so they look at a tough defensive team like Princeton and you say, you know, where where can we make better shot selections? And I think you, one thing you look back at is the amount of turnovers. Columbia turned the ball over a lot and a lot more than they're used to. So you look at those possessions where you could have gotten a quality shot versus a turnover, and then if Shu shoots better, I mean, she just had a tough day. This game would be a lot closer. Stevens for the tray. Weiss with the miss. Here is Shu, gets Belker in the air. No call, a good no call yeah. from Anthony Red. Still Weiss, here it man. comes. Tom, you Watch got it. Coffee. I think it's all right. <laughs> Brooke, I learned that from you. Brooke was running drills with me uh, before the broadcast, by the way. It was a two-person week. Tom, good stuff here. Statistician right next to us. Active hands, just like the players. That's right. Deflections. We'll, we'll, we'll tap yep, one onto your yeah, chart. So we, we need the manager up there. It's our folks from home charting it up. St. Rose had Shia Rafu with the steal. The work by Susie there for Columbia. Chu. For three, she's got it that time for shoot. By the way, now seventh all time in Ivy League scoring. Under a minute to go here from Jadwin. And the foul from Stevens. It's a Princeton team that will improve to nine consecutive wins, 14 and three, four and zero oh in the Ivy. Coming schedule, they have Cornell, Yale, by the way, got their first Ivy League win this year. Brown to follow. You know, remember all the history of those, those tough games for those that have followed the Ivy between Princeton and Penn. That has kind of shifted lately to the game that we have today in Princeton versus Columbia. So I know a few games down, they have Penn on the horizon to Coach McLaughlin's team. To the test of the, the dominance of the women's basketball program that Princeton has here on their campus. And by the way, they'll be at home for the next three games. Mitchell at the line has just been, been so dominant. Yeah, Columbia's going to fall to 12 and 5, 3 and 1. A tough game, as I mentioned, what Coach McLaughlin's team has at Penn. Next Saturday, then a tough one against Harvard. Those two teams might be expected to be an Ivy Madness, which are the top four teams for the right to go to the NCAA tournament, the automatic bid in the Ivy, along with Columbia and Princeton.
Yeah, these two teams, you're likely you know, to see these of two of the last four remaining. And I think you're right. You hit it on the head, you know, the, the, the rivalry and the way that these, these teams have had matchups. I mean, last year, they went one and one. It was a sellout at Columbia, standing room only. I mean, today we had a great crowd show up as well. The game is it's not even growing. I mean, it's bursting. It's here. Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. Here's our first ESPN Big Monday doubleheader of the season. R.J. Davis and number four, North Carolina, lead the ACC. They host Wake Forest at 7 Eastern. And it's off to Allen Fieldhouse, 9 Eastern, Kansas, three in the nation against Cincinnati. Monday ESPN and the ESPN app. Joe Lenardi has Kansas on the men's side as one of his top four seeds right now. UNC threatening in the mix as well, along with Arizona and company. Riley Weiss here out of the timeout, drains the three. It's going to be a lot of fun years for Riley Weiss at Columbia. Their squad down by 12 off Princeton here in the fourth quarter. Belker will go to the, the charity stripe. And, you know, it, it appears just big picture like we were hitting on a moment ago. You, know, you got to consider Princeton to, to be at the top to, to win the Ivy League tournament, which they've done the last two years under coach Carla Berube, and get there again. They played Harvard in the title game and won. And our big focal point also is how do they get the Ivy League to be a multi bid league? You, you cover the. Yeah. The NCAA tournament, you know, with some of these conferences, it, it, it's tough to do that, right? Yeah, you'd love to see it. I mean, and, and there's other leagues out there that that feel just as strongly as an Ivy League would, right? You look at like a team like the or a league like the American Conference, yep. with a lot of you know, bigger oh, schools, I guess, quote unquote, right, to be able to to have that same type of argument and competitiveness. So the NCAA yeah. committee is going to have their work cut yeah, out for yeah, them Char this year. Charlie Cream, our colleague at oh, yeah. ESPN, will definitely have his hands full. Predicting the women's field. By the way, a timeout was called by Columbia with 37 seconds left in regulation. And the Ivy has a plethora of fantastic scores led by Shoes. She matches what she provides this season. St. Rose has eclipsed that. She had the big story with her. I know this was a tough game for her because she was just in a lot of foul trouble today with four fouls. Yeah, the rhythm caught her yeah. early um, and and she she's trying to catch that rhythm late and I give her a lot of credit because she fought through it and she made some really big plays that you know might not show up on the scoreboard or the stat sheet but stayed with it and played with extreme maturity the resurgence of the game by Shu at eight points early on followed that up at 13 to give her 21 today Weiss wants another three off the mark that time Again, the Wecky should be recognized as well, getting into the starting lineup for Princeton today. As nine points, four of five shooting with her six boards, 9.6 rebounds, and a lineup change for Barubi in place of Parker Hill. And Wecky came in, just was such an important piece today. Nine points in her first career start, making a great statement, and Columbia's not just going to let this game go. They're going to try to keep it stopped and and see what they can do. I mean, crazier things, maybe not crazier, but a lot of crazy things have happened with comebacks. And, and that's one of the reasons, too, just to add to a point. I love quarters because of that reason. You get a lot of great comebacks. But this one, too.
streak for the Tigers in the series. Getting it here off of the inbounds inside the Fliss Henderson. Could have a great career at Columbia as well. Trying to get her own miss with 20 to play. Officials confer goes off of Fliss. Back to the Tigers. Columbia, though, is going to have a strong end, no doubt you could forecast for this season. As Princeton's going to get the ball back. Columbia losing, by the way, last year was a tough one. They, I, I mentioned it once early on, Brooke. They were the last team, they were the first team out in the NCAA tournament when that, that was revealed. St. John's was the last team in. And that was a tough one for Columbia. They get to the WNIT quarterfinals two years ago. WNIT championship losing to Kansas last year. Lose a heartbreaker in overtime. Here, by the way, a Jad went to Harvard. That kind of bounced them out of the tournament. Hopefully yeah. they can they can get to the Ivy League tournament again and, and make some noise. I'll tell you and how they're hosting too. How competitive it is, right? Yeah. To to get to the NCAA tournament. And you could in your mind do just about everything right. Yeah but you're still sitting there on the edge of your seat just hoping that your team is going to get called on Selection Sunday. See, the season that, that Columbia has had played some reputable competition. I mentioned losing at the, the buzzer to Florida, the, the tough loss to Duke. They're losing for the first time here since November. And they're about 12 points below their average, a test of what Princeton is providing was an official review here. We're going to change the call and go back in the direction it looks like here for Columbia and for Megan Griffith's team. By the way, winning as coach in Columbia history, Edward Griffith coming back here to Princeton. Big storyline today. She was an assistant coach and reporting coordinator for six years. Over to Collins here to Weiss. Two seconds separated the game and shot clock there. St. Rose with 21 points today. Gonna dribble this out here for Chen. And for Chen in her senior year, and the Tigers, they get a big win by 15 over Columbia. Since Columbia led by two, with six minutes left in the third, Princeton outscored them 41 to 24 on the last 16 minutes to improve the 4-0 in the Ivy. It was the defense and intensity of the Tigers coming out in the second half. Remember, they were down. They're not down very much in this building. This is a tough place to get the win if you're a visiting squad. Princeton showed you why. Ellie Mitchell with a huge game today. Mitchell with her 15th career double-double. St. Rose and Belker also with 21 points as well. Princeton.